So we're embarking on the journey of trigonometry. We haven't been doing trig yet this year. We've been doing pre-calculus, which is anything before calculus, among which is included trigonometry. Uh, usually that's taught as its own little class, but there's really not enough content to make it last a whole like high school year. It's a great college class for a semester, but for, for a high school class, it's not enough. So we just kind of like, smash it into pre-cal right now and we're going to spend about three units on it so we'll be in trig for a while um we'll probably do one more pre-calculus thing after we're done trig and that'll be the end of the year so most of our year now is going to be trig so um <clears throat> let's see so today we're, we're embarking on trig so what what is trigonometry well um trigonometry is basically just studying you don't need to write this but it's basically just studying how the angles of a triangle affect the sides of a triangle. That's pretty much the gist of it. That's trigonometry. Um, there's all kinds of stuff you can do with it. Um, this this chapter, we're pretty much not going to do much, a whole lot more. Not a, we'll, we'll do a little bit more, but not a whole lot more than what you would have done in a standard geometry class by now. I mean, if you were in geometry, I'm pretty sure, I haven't taught geometry in a few years, but I'm pretty sure last time I taught it, they go, they go over things like sine, cosine, tangent. If you had that one teacher that retired. You know what, sometimes the, yeah, the algebra teachers have been covering it. Or it used to be a big, much more a geometry thing. Um, so we have those things. So we're doing that. A lot of the basic stuff. Um, but then next chapter, we're getting to something that you probably didn't get too much into. Maybe if you had an algebra teacher, you might have gotten to some of this too. But graphing trig functions. Um, and then also the last one, we're going to start putting the algebra with all the trig stuff that we've learned in doing stuff. Um, so, a lot, lot of trig ground to cover. Um, today we're going to be starting off by talking about angles and standard position. Um, we're going to talk about positive angles, negative angles. You guys should be able to sketch angles if I give you a particular measurement. I should also be able to give you a diagram like on the worksheet I handed out to you. And you should be able to find the measure of the angle. Um, and so that's pretty much all we're doing today. Let's go ahead and uh, begin here. So <clears throat> first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about standard position. Okay, so standard position looks like this. You're going to have a y-axis and an x-axis, all right? Um, you're going to have an angle where the vertex is right at the origin, and one side will always be on the positive x-axis, and that will be called the initial side. And then you'll have another line that gives you the angle, right? And that other line is what we're going to call the terminal side, initial means starting, terminal means ending. Um, you guys will notice I put an arrow there. Um, in trigonometry, angles are changing, they're moving, so it's kind of like the hands on a clock, right? How they move around and the angles changing as it goes around. And so, <clears throat> We call them directed angles. Now, typically, they do go in a counterclockwise fashion. And that's why we call this first quadrant, quadrant one. And then it would go to what quadrant after that? Two. To the left would be quadrant two. Three. And three would be in the bottom left. And four. And then four. If we're going in a circular fashion in that direction, we would go through those quadrants in that order. OK? Um, the variable that we use for angles in trigonometry, it could be x, but a lot of times they use like this weird little circle with a line through it called theta. Okay, so that's it. So that's what angles in standard position look like. So I'll pause here for a little bit in case you're still writing. I'll wait about 20 seconds. I like to bring up this little graphic whenever I teach this stuff. Um, Let's see. So I'm going to draw a y axis and draw an x axis. Oh, 
<clears throat> okay, so there, there you guys go. So you can kind of see as I'm sliding that around, the angles there in the middle is changing. So it's right about there, 69 degrees. Up here would be about 90, right? And then we keep going. And by the time you get over here, you're at 180. Down here, you get 274. I'm sorry, well, 27. It actually should be about 270. There we go. And then all, a full circle is, as you guys know, 360 degrees, right? Um, I wonder if this thing does negative angles. Let's see. I don't think it does. So we can go, well, we'll talk about that later. But for now, there you guys have it. So what's kind of important to know is, is what the, um, the axial angles are. Axial angles means what is the angle at, at each axis. So when you guys are up here, what, what is it? Like if I'm here and I rotate all the way to here, what would that be? 90. 90. And what if I rotate another one? 180. Uh huh. 270. Yeah, and just going up by 90s, right? And the last one? 360. 360. Okay. Now, um, I want you guys to look at this other little handout that I gave you. Let me see if I can find it. I seem to have forgotten about it. Get your circle out really quick. It is. It, it does look confusing, but hopefully by the end it won't be as confusing. It's almost like I Okay, so I'm going to have you guys fill this out right now in just a second with the angles. Now, in this class uh, for trigonometry, there's two ways you can measure angles. Degrees, which is what you guys are familiar with already, but there's another one called radians, which you might have gotten a taste of in previous years. They are great. Um, we're going to put the degrees in the little oval shape. So this is the beginning, right? So we're going to put a zero there. And then if we rotate all the way up to here, what would we say this was? 90 and so on, right? But I want you guys to fill in all of these. So I'll tell you how we're going to do it. Um, as you guys can see, they have big gaps and little gaps. Like you guys can see from here to here is a big gap, right? Big gaps are 30 degrees. So from here to here is 30 degrees. All right. But the next one after that is what we'll call a little gap. So from here to here is only 15. So if I'm at 30, 30 plus 15 more would give me 45. Okay. So I want you guys to go through and I want you to fill in all your, your little circles there. Big gaps are 30 degrees, so you add 30 to where you left off. Little gaps are 15, so you add 15 to where you left off. Is the next one big or small? That you can kind of tell by looking. Like it's I would small. say this is another small one, right? So that's going to, what's 15 plus 45? 60. And you can check yourself because we've already got the axial angles down, right? So this is a big one, right? So I should be adding 30. And 60 plus 30 makes 90. If, if you don't get the right answer at the axis, then you might want to go back and double check your math because it should it should work out. So go ahead and fill that in. So Isaac, would you help me fill in the rest of these and this quadrant two up here, please? Uh-huh. Next one? Uh-huh. Good. All right. Um, Isabella, yeah. next quadrant, please. Good. And then last one, Cece. Um, 300, 315, and 330. Okay, now here's the thing. I that, that probably took you guys a grand total of like maybe like, even though I gave you guys a little bit of time, some of you guys were done with that like in less than 30 seconds. That's great. That's fine. Um, now, as you can see, there's a lot of blanks here, right? We're going to be filling in all these blanks. Every time we fill in a blank, the next day I'm going to give you guys a quiz. 
Okay. And the quiz is going to be a memory quiz. So I'm expecting you guys to memorize the entire unit circle. I know, I know. Yeah. The same thing, but he so, did it on the back. So don't worry, you'll like it. Easy points. Easy points. I looked at Taylor. And Taylor looked at right. her. We all looked at that. So now here's the thing. I know you guys can. Um, I know you guys can calculate your way to this. Can you guys be quiet, please? Trying to teach here. Type on. Trying to teach. All right. So I know you guys can calculate that pretty quickly. It's not an issue. But the problem is that I would like you guys to be able to have nothing in front of you. And if I were to say to Ricky, Ricky, what is this? I'd like him to be able to tell me that it's 300 pretty quickly, right? Um, I don't want him to have to add all the way up to 300 every time he wants to know what that is, right? So I am asking you guys not to figure it out. I, I will always have you figure it out initially because I want you guys to know how to figure it out in case you actually just forget completely. But really what I want you to do is be drilling yourself on this. There's a really cool app. I don't know if it costs money or not. I have it on my phone where it once the entire unit circle is done, you, you quiz yourself. It's like a time thing. And you try to race them. I usually offer people extra credit if they can beat my time and score. Um, and I've, I've had students beat my time and score. So, yeah, it's pretty. And all it is is tapping. It's like they give you the angle or whatever in the middle. You have to tap where it goes, tap where it goes, tap where it goes. Unfortunately, they don't have one for just angles or just radians or just the coordinates. They just do it all at once. So we won't be able to play that game until we're done with the unit circle. But for now, for now, be committing them to memory. So probably tomorrow we'll be having a quiz on the angles. I'll expect you guys just to be able to throw that on there and be done. Shouldn't take too long. All right. Um, let's continue. So now that we know that, let's let's do some angle sketching. Let's do this. what are some problems you're actually going to be asked to do on your homework now. Let's see what that'll look like. Oh, by the way, you guys, you might be wondering, like, why why do we have the unit circle in trig? Well, it's a reference sheet. Everything that you do in trig um, pretty much has to do with the angles that you just filled in there. Um, and from those angles, you can figure out all kinds of side lengths for triangles and things. So what it is, it's like a giant reference sheet, okay? Now, on the back, by the way, we didn't do this, but maybe, maybe we should do this before we move on. Actually, I forgot about it. But on the back, I, I put it in table form. Now, the table one is actually easier to use if you're just going to cheat and look at the answer than this one is. But the thing is, is that the circle actually helps memory. There's patterns in there, and you can kind of see things and figure them out. So the circle's what I'm going to really be encouraging you guys to use, but I'll also let you guys use this too. So, matter of fact, before we start up example one here, Let's go back and let's fill in that, that second page really quick. Um, I'll probably forget to tell you guys to be updating that as we go, So, um, but I'll try to remember. Um, I'm not used to having students do this one, but I, it is very user-friendly. It's nice to use. So, All right, the first angle we have is 0, 30, 45, 60. I'll give you as many as I can until my screen runs out, and I'll let you guys do the rest. 120. 135, 150, 180. And that's as far as I'm going to go. I'll let you guys do the rest of that column really quick. While you guys are writing, I'll just say um, if you're absent, you know, during this chapter, whenever we're working on the unit, filling out our unit circle, uh, make sure you either A, watch the notes and fill out your unit circle because you're going to need it, or B, you, you can really just go onto Google and type in unit circle. They have them already done and completed. So if you miss something or just want to check your work, just look it up on Google and you can get the correct answer on there. It should stop at 330, right? Yeah, you'll stop it. Well, does it go to 360? No. no it's not it only has enough spaces for 330? Yeah. Okay, we'll stop at 330 then. Okay. And just so you guys know, 0 and 360 are at the same exact spot on your unit circle. So you could just put 360 next to zero. They're the same thing. They'll, well, they'll give you the same answers, pretty much. Wait a little bit more, and then we'll move on to our first example.
Okay, guys. All right, guys. Um, here we go. Now, we're going to be sketching some angles, okay? Um, now, when you're sketching these, we're not going to be really precise. So we're not going to, like, busting out the protractor and getting real precise. We just want to get close, okay? So now, if you need to, you can look at your your unit circle to figure out how to do this. But I'm, I'm asking you to sketch a 370-degree angle. So, of course, we always have a side here. That's always going to be there. we got to figure out where 307 is. Well, I know that down here is 270. That's not enough, so I would need to go a little bit further. I know 300 is, like, right about here-ish. So I, I would go a little bit more, and I just put my line there, right? Mm -hmm. Now it starts here, and it goes around this way, and you have to include the arrow. Why? Dylan. Dylan. Smith. Smith, Ryan. Unplug your ear. Put yourself on line. I'm going to keep math. All right. Let's do number two. Wait, you didn't do any. Next one. That's it. Just sketching an angle. 100 and let's say. Is this the homework? 15. Some of it. So it would be right there by like 190 ish. Uh huh. I'm going to kill you one day. You know, you can say those type of things. Uh, just go okay. Okay. But you really, you need the pencil, but we'll ask for one. Oh, okay. All right, so let's, uh... See, so we always have to have one at the positive x-axis, right? So right here. And then this is 90 up here, and... 120 was the next one on our unit circle, like right about there. So 115 would be a little bit less. So I'd put it like right about there. Let me draw a little arrow and that's it. Okay. And we're just estimating. We're not being real precise. Okay. We're just estimating. So basically, I, I, I you know, I should be able to say, oh, it should be if it's in quadrant one, it should be in quadrant one. You know what I mean? Something like that. Just don't forget to have the little arrow there because that arrow matters. You'll see why in a minute. So let me throw some student practices at you here real quick, just to make sure you guys are... Uh, you might not, but we have time, why not? <laughs> Waste your time. Your precious time, so sorry. All right, go ahead, guys. Sketch me some angles real quick. Make sure you go with that so you got any... I would say those are pretty reasonable estimates. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, moving on. So the next thing I want to talk about with you guys is uh, negative angles. Negative angles. Okay. So uh, negative angles go down clockwise. Yep. Counter. Guys, what is That's dumb. We were going counterclockwise. Now we're going clockwise. We were going this way. Uh, <laughs> we were going that way. Don't forget that I literally so now we're going to forget that pressure points don't exist. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna draw a circle here real quick. Now, whether or not. Okay, guys. When when you hear Mr. Bailey's voice, that means I'm teaching, so you should probably not be talking. Okay. So. I'm going to draw another unit circle, but this time I do it with negative angles, all right? So this is a zero. Now, last time I went up this way and I called it 30, right? This time I'm going to go down this way and I'm going to call it negative 30. It's, it's literally the same circle, but whatever was up here, like this was 45, now this one's negative 45. This one was 60, this one's negative 60, negative 90. So these are angles that are moving in a negative clockwise clockwise direction okay so that's it I mean I'll, I'll complete the circle you may not really even need to because like I said whenever I'm doing this I just think about okay whatever goes here is the number that was up here which I know is 135 so it's negative 135 that was 150 so this is negative 150 negative 180 and so on 
So if you want to fill it in, you can use it as a reference sheet. You're welcome to. Um, This is just why I'm just going to want to do this. I think you can start to I have one. Oh. Um, I'll leave it up there for a little bit more and then we're going to move on. So we're going to do the same thing we just did with the, the sketching of the angles, but this time I'm going to have you guys sketch some negative angles just so you can kind of get used to that. So. All right, so let's say example two here. All right, we've got negative 125 here, right? So how do we do this? Well, you want, there's two ways. One way is if you still haven't got the angles placements memorized yet, is you can just look at the sheet you just copied down right with all the negative angles. The other way is I, I just go like this. I think, well, I know 120 is up here, so 125 is a little bit more. And this is negative, so it's just going to be on the opposite side down here. But what's important is that you get the angle right on the inside. You have to draw your arrow on this side. And now you guys can see, don't don't draw this part, but if you guys drew this, that's a different answer, right? Yes, that's a positive angle that means something else, whereas the one on the other side of it is the one we actually care about. So that's that's the answer for the negative one. Let's do another one here. Just don't be dumb. How about negative 80? All right. So I know that 80 would be like somewhere like right about here on a positive angle. So if I just flip it to down here, draw my line, I'm ready to go. Okay. Yeah, it's not too bad. So just remembering the right direction. So once again, I'll let you guys practice drawing some negative angles before we move on to the next part. Dylan, give me a negative angle. Any Dylan? Negative three, two ninety. two ninety, and then give me another negative. Negative one. <laughs> uh, I'll, negative I'll, three, I'll say negative five. Negative, zero. negative one's kind of hard to draw. It's so small, it's like a slit. You're, you're a man of precise preferences. This is good, but I'm going to go with five. Let's go with five. Anyway, so we have here two ninety. The one on the left is good, and it's kind of hard when they're this small. So I, I understand, but you know, just don't forget when you do these to have an arrow if you can. On the five, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it. But okay, let's go ahead and move on to the next part. The, the next ones are why I handed out that worksheet to you guys earlier today. Yeah, that's for tomorrow. So go ahead and get out that worksheet that I handed out, or some of you guys are just doing your notes on there. That's fine. Just flip it over. We're going to do. That's the homework. I don't want the homework. Are you sure? I am. Are you sure about that? I am rather sure. Don't 61. look at the answers. <laughs> All right, go ahead and find number one there. Oh, How'd you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys ready? So this is, instead of me at giving you an angle and asking you to sketch it, I'm going to give you the sketch and ask you to find it. Now, the way that these ones work is, is they're always going to give you a little piece right here. Well, I'll just call it a reference angle, this guy here. Um, they're giving us some information there that we need. So some of you guys already know the answer to this pretty easily, but just, just in case, we better go through here. So first of all, is this a positive angle or a negative? Positive. positive. Now from here to here is how much? 180. And then from here to here, how much is it? I'm not getting too, I'm getting some mumbles. I'm not sure, what, but I'm not hearing the right answer. It's from here to here is how much? 80. That's why they give you that. 
because you're, you're always going to have a little extra piece on there that's not normal. It's like, like we know from there, from all the way straight across is 180, but this, you can't really know unless they give you a, a, an actual measurement there. So they're telling us from there, there's 80. So the orange is 180, the green is 80. Put those together and you're going to get 260. So that angle is a 260 degree angle from here to here. That's racist. You're judging it based on the color of its feet. All right. I would like you guys to try number six, please. Try number six. Yeah, this is for you guys to write on. So do number six, please. Here we go. Kaylin, what, what did you get for this one? What would you get for this one? Oh. Oh. All right. Oh yeah. It's just Dylan Smith, what did you get for this one? What? Oh, 175. 175, because from here to here is how much? 90 plus 85 gives us 175. Sure. All right. Let's do another one. Now this one's a little bit different, so pay attention. This one's so number two. So find number two on your worksheet, please. It was 175. Okay, so guys, here's the deal. Um, to find the measure of this angle, to find the measure of this angle here, I, I need to go from here to here, which we already know is 90, but we need another little piece. And so just a little tiny wedge right in here. And here's the issue. They didn't tell me what it is this time. That'll happen. Usually if they don't tell you what that little wedge is, you'll know what the wedge next to it is. So if this whole thing, we know this from here to here is how much? 80. I'm sorry, from here to here is 90, sorry. What, so what's this little wedge have to be then? 10. So then to get my answer, it's going to be 90 plus 10, which is 100. Thank you. I do try. All right, so the point of this example was sometimes the extra little wedge you need, you don't know, but usually you can find it by doing some subtraction. Let's go ahead and see if you guys can do number seven now. Do seven. For number seven, I got 150. All right, the answer is 150, so let's see why. So from here to here is 90, right? And then we need to go a little bit more right here, but we don't know what that is yet. So what we do is, is we know that That's this whole thing here has to make 90, right? Mm -hmm. So if this much of it is 30, this would have to be 60. So now we know that the little green wedge there is 60 degrees. So it's 90 plus 60, which gives us 150. Okay. Now there's another way to do this. Exactly. Yeah. So some people just do this naturally and instinctually. That's good. This will be very easy for you guys. But uh, basically, we know this whole thing here is 180, right? So instead of adding, we can actually take away the 30 that they tell us. And that's another way to get your 150. Okay. From here to here is 180, and if we subtract the 30, then that means what's left must be 150. So that works also. All right, now we're going to do some other stuff here. So back it up to number three. One, two, three. All right, so find number three. What's different about number three? It's a negative angle, so you got to keep that in mind. So here we go. So what is from here all the way to there? Uh, negative 270. Good. Now, I need to go a little bit more now. So, what's this little bit now? They tell you it's 50, right? So, and it's a negative 50 because we're still going in a clockwise direction. Now, since they're both negative, you are just going to add them together as is, and so you end up with 0, 2, 1, Negative 320. Okay? So negative angles work the same way as positive angles. Just got to recognize their, what direction they're going. Um, I'll do another one. Let's take a look at number four, please. 
All right, so for number four, once again, we're, we're going to go from here to here in a negative direction, which means what, what's that how much that I just highlighted? Negative 90. And then we need to go from here to here, which is a tiny little wedge. And, and we don't know what that is yet, right? But we're going to use the same, it's, yeah, it's we're going to use the same strategy we had before. The whole thing's 90. Take 80 away, you're left with 10. Right. So we're going to have negative 10 for a total of negative 100. Okay, so I'm going to have you guys do 8 and 9 now, please. Try 8 and 9. Is this it, guys? Is that 9? And is this 8? Yes. Okay. So let's see what you guys got. Austin, what'd you get for number eight? Can I say it if he doesn't? It's negative 210. Let's see why. From here to here is 180. Negative. And then from here to here is 30. Negative. Put those together. You got negative 210. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. Uh, Robert, what'd you get for number nine? Okay. Which one you Who was that? Tech one? Here. Negative 305 is good. So let's see why. First of all, we have a missing piece that we're going to need, and that should be 35. So you have 270 plus 35. We got three minutes. I see you guys are zipping up. And you guys are probably fine, but I am going to do one more because it is different. I want to show it to you. So if you want to write it down, go ahead. If you feel like this is easy and you don't need it, that's fine. But let's go ahead and take a look at number 10. So the thing that makes number 10 different is the, the wedge that they give you. It's it's more than 90, so it, it covers over two. Okay, guys, can you be quiet, please? Shh. It's number 10. All right, so once again, what makes this one different is that the wedge they give us is greater than 90. So the whole thing that we've been doing before where you do 90 minus the number, that's not going to work this time. So what we have to do to figure out our missing wedge whenever they give us a wedge that's bigger than 90 is you're going to subtract it from what instead? 180, right? So the, from here to here is 180. This much of it is 105. So if I want to find out what the remaining bit is, oops, I don't know, I wrote that really weird. We get 75. Now is it a positive 75 or a negative though? Negative. Because it's going clockwise, right? So the answer is negative 75. So sometimes when you have missing wedges, if, they, if the wedge they give you is greater than 90, you'll be subtracting from 180 instead of 90, okay? But that's the end of it. We'll stop there.